Air pressure inside an inflated automobile tire is considerably greater than the atmospheric pressure outside. Density of air inside is also greater than the density of the air outside. Let's look at the relation between pressure and density. Think of the molecules of air, primarily nitrogen and oxygen, inside the tire behaving like tiny ping pong balls perpetually moving helter-skelter and banging against one another and against the inner walls. Their impacts produce a jittery force that appears to our coarse senses as a steady push. This pushing force, averaged over a unit of area, provides the pressure of the enclosed air. Suppose there are twice as many molecules in the same volume. Then the air density is doubled. If the molecules move at the same average speed, or equivalently, if they have the same temperature, then the number of collisions will be doubled. This means the pressure is doubled, so pressure is proportional to density. So when the density of gas in the tire is increased, pressure is increased, which makes sense. Consider this chamber fitted with a movable piston. We can double the air density by compressing the air to half its volume. When the piston is pushed downward so that the volume is half its original volume, the density of molecules doubles and the pressure correspondingly doubles. That's if the temperature remains constant. And if the piston were pushed down for a volume of one-third its original value, the pressure would increase by three, and so forth. So when the volume of gas is decreased, density and therefore pressure increases. That's providing the temperature remains the same and the number of molecules remains the same. Notice in these examples that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. V is 1 over P, or P is 1 over V. If you double one, for example, you have the other. We can write this as the product of PV equals a constant. If either pressure or volume of the gas varies, the other variable changes so the product PV remains the same. Another way to express this is P sub 1 times V sub 1 equals P sub 2 times V sub 2. Here P sub 1 and V sub 1 represent the original pressure and volume respectively, and P sub 2 and V sub 2 represent the second pressure and volume. Or put more graphically, the symbol sizes tell the story. P times big V equals big P times small v. This relationship between pressure and volume is called Boyle's Law, after scientist Robert Boyle, who discovered the relationship with his own experiments in the 17th century. Boyle's Law applies to ideal gases. By ideal gas is meant a gas in which the disturbing effects of the forces between molecules and the finite size of individual molecules can be neglected. Air and other gases under normal pressures approach ideal gas conditions. A general law that takes temperature changes into account, discovered more than a century later, is PV over T equals PV over T where T sub 1 and T sub 2 represent the first and second absolute temperatures measured in the SI unit for temperature called the Kelvin. I mention this general law as a footnote here, as we'll treat absolute temperatures and Kelvins in later lessons. For now, I want to leave you with a question. Consider an airtight chamber with its piston withdrawn, pulled upward. Volume is increased, not decreased, as we've been discussing. Question. What change in air pressure occurs inside an airtight chamber when its piston is withdrawn such that the volume of enclosed air increases by three times? How much pressure? Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.